my October favorites for you. I can't believe we're like on the home stretch of 2016. It just seems like this whole year just flew by so quickly. I don't know if it's because I've been so busy in my job or if time just seems to be getting short. I don't know. It just seems to have gone by so fast. Not that I'm complaining because that means that February, February will be here sooner than I think. And I'll be getting on a plane and going on vacation, which I can't wait for. I'm so excited for my trip. Anyway, I am going to do what I normally do with my favorites. I'm going to start off with my nail polish favorites, some beauty favorites, and then on to random favorites. Now, I just want to ask you guys a question. Do you guys like it when I do everything all in one? Or would you like me to do a separate nail polish favorites and then beauty and random favorites in a separate video? Let me know which you would prefer down below. If you want everything in one video, I'm... Keep, I'm happy to keep doing it this way or if you want two separate videos just let me know because I'd rather you guys you know if you want to watch just nail polish then you can just watch the nail polish if you guys want to watch everything then you guys can watch two separate videos or one long video just let me know let me know what you guys prefer and I will start doing that as of next month okay so we're gonna get into nail polish favorites first my first nail polish favorite is this pretty serious nail polish this is called invitation only it is a christmas polish from a couple years ago just look how cute this packaging is it's absolutely adorable i love the pretty serious packaging all of my pretty serious polishes are kept in their little box because it's just a cute it's too cute to throw it away it has to stay in the packaging so this is invitation only so this is kind of like a gunmetal gray with, uh, they say it's holographic, but I really don't find it to be that holographic. Uh, it does have a, like a purpley greenish kind of flash in the gunmetal, and it, it does have some holographic particles in here. I would say it's a, it's a, it's not, it's not like, say, um, what am I thinking of? Like Up and Cunning from, uh from KB Shamrock where that's hugely holographic. This has a little bit of holographic in it. So it was beautiful polish. It was about, it was two coats to be fully opaque on the nail. I would highly recommend this. It's the first time I've worn this. I've had it in my collection for a while. I just haven't had a chance to wear it. So I pulled it out this past, past month and absolutely loved it. So this is pretty serious invitation only. So the next three polishes I'm going to talk about, um, I mentioned in my most recent haul. I tried to wear as many as many of them as possible during the last month, just so I could get a feel of what I liked and what I didn't like. So the ones that I have here are the ones that I ended up liking quite a bit. So I'm going to get started there. First one up is this Illamasqua polish right here. This is Viridian. This is a deep forest green type of color um, with a bit above a metallic -y flash to it. It also has very, very, very small bluish green glitters in here. Like, you have to really look to see them. Um, it's just a stunning polish. It's very, very vampy and fall, perfect for fall. I really enjoyed this. This was two coats to get fully opaque. I probably could have got away with one if I had been done a little bit of a heavier first coat, but ended up with two coats to get it fully opaque on my nails. So this is Viridian from Illamasqua. So the next nail polish that I loved this month was this LA Girl 3D Effect Hologram Nail Polish in Teal Dimension. When I picked this up originally, I was really excited because it has a label right on the front that says holographic teal dimension, lovely holographic label, it just looks like rainbows on here, so I was hoping that I was going to get, you know, more of a holographic effect with this nail polish. It, they lied. There's not very much, there's like literally zero holographic in this nail polish. But there was something about it when it was on my nails with the silver glitters that were in here. They're not silver holographic glitters, they're just silver glitters. It gave it some sort of, it gave it a 3D effect. Like this is called a 3, it's called 3D effect. They didn't lie about the 3D effect. It had like, it looked like layers on my nails, which gave it a cool effect. But the holographic part, totally lied. There's no holographic in this, which kind of bummed me out. And I, you know, the first time, when I had finished my manicure, I'm looking at it, I'm like, that's not holographic at all, like, what the heck? But after looking at my nails the next day and then the day after, I'm like, I, no, I actually kind of like this nail polish, even though it is not holographic, I did end up liking it quite a bit. So when you, if you see this on the shelf, it's not holographic, but the effect that it gave on my nail was really pretty, pretty so I do recommend it. So this is the LA Girl Holographic Teal Dimension Polish. And the last polish from my most recent haul is this one right here. This is called It's Alive. It's from China Glaze. 
This is an olivey green uh, glitter uh, in, a, in a, gr a light greenish kind of base. I think it's black glitter in here too. It, uh, this went on really, really thick. I don't know if I need to put a drop of thinner in here to thin it out a little bit, but it was really, really thick. Like it was almost a one coater covered the whole nail. Like I was really impressed with that, but it seemed a bit gloopy. So I think I might need to put a bit thinner in here for the next time I wear it, but it was a great Walking Dead polish. I wore this for the Walking Dead premiere that was last weekend. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but uh, so stick around if you want to hear about my opinions of the Walking Dead premiere. But this is what I had, had on my nails when I was watching it. Uh, I saw it at Amy over at Nail Polish Baby 90 had swatched this on her Instagram. I'm like, I should pull that out and put it on my nails. So I did, and I absolutely loved it. So this is It's Alive from China Glaze. My last nail polish favorite is this one right here. This is called Penny Talk. It's by Essie. Now, if you watched my What's on My Lambing List video uh, from last month or the month before, this was on my lemming list. So I've crushed one of my lemmings off. I'm so happy that I, that finally happened. Um, so I picked this up after I said that I'm not, I'm going on a no buy, I'm not buying any polish. But I mean, a lemming, it, you know, if you have the opportunity to pick up a lemming polish, I think your no buy should just stop. <laughs> for those 10 minutes that it takes you to buy your, buy your lemming polish. So I, I did pick this up. Um, I was extremely happy to find it. It's like a beautiful rose gold uh, metallic finish to it. It was It's absolutely beautiful. Two, two coats to get this fully opaque on my nails. It was absolutely beautiful. Formula was great. Highly recommend this if you can find it. This is Penny Talk from Essie. As for beauty favorites, I don't have much this month. Um, I didn't wear very much makeup this month at all. Um, I don't normally wear makeup for work because it's just too much hassle in the mornings when I got to get myself ready and the kids ready. It's just too much work to put a whole face of makeup on. I generally only wear makeup on the weekends and even for the month of October I didn't really do that too much. So I've only got four beauty favorites and I'm going to get right into this for you. The first beauty favorite of the month is this blush right here. This is uh, by Milani. It's called Luminoso. It is a beautiful peachy colored blush and it has a beautiful sheen to it. I'm just gonna give you a swatch on the back of my hand here so you can see it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick that up. My lighting's not the greatest today for some reason. It's because it's so dark out unfortunately. So it's just this beautiful peachy sheen um, to it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's what I have on my cheeks today. I really do like this blush. This blush came highly recommended uh, by Kathleen Lights here on YouTube. She raves about this um, blush. I highly recommend picking this up if you can find it in Walmart. I'm not sure where else Milani is sold, but that's where I picked mine up was from Walmart. So this is Luminoso from Milani. My next favorite is this mascara. This is the Essence Get Big Lashes. This is the waterproof um, version of it. I always wear waterproof, waterproof mascara because my eyes water a lot. Like half the time when I'm editing my videos I have to cut out little portions where I'm going like this because my eyes are just watering so bad that I have to cut out those portions where I'm just wiping away the tears that are running down my cheeks. So I always wear waterproof mascara and this is a great one. It, it gives you nice big lashes like it's saying it does. Best thing about this is like two bucks. You can't go wrong for two bucks. So this is Get Big Lashes by Essence. My next favorite, I think I've mentioned this before, but this is the NYX HD Concealer. This is actually empty. I just finished it today. Literally had to scrape around the sides of the tube to get enough to put under my eyes today. So I need to go out and purchase another one of this, these because it was, was great and I really do recommend it and price again of NYX is very affordable so you don't have to worry about the price tag of it. So this is the NYX HD concealer uh, and I have mine in porcelain in case you're wondering because I'm pale as fuck. And my last beauty favorite which is not affordable like the other three items that I just mentioned because it's MAC. This is MAC Russian Red. This is what I have on my lips right now. It is my favorite red lipstick. Um, it's just a beautiful true red and it's a matte 
lipstick, which is what I prefer. That's my preferred finish for lipstick. Uh, I picked this up last year. I had uh, was going out with some friends, and I decided to go to the MAC counter and get them to do my makeup before I went out. And this is one of the things that I purchased because you have to you have to spend 50 bucks for them to do your makeup. So this is one of the things that I purchased and I wore that night. And I do love this red. I've always been on the hunt for a, my perfect red and this ended up being it. So this is Russian Red from MAC. For random favorites, let's start with TV first. Um, I really enjoyed Designated Survivor this month. Um, it's a brand new series that started this fall. It has Kiefer Sutherland in it. Uh, he plays the newly appointed president as he is the designated survivor after a huge um, terrorist attack happens in Washington DC. It's really really good. Um, makes you think as to what might happen if ever something like that were to happen in the States. I am, you know, I live in Canada so I kind of watch from afar, especially what's going on with the the US election right now. I'm just, I'm just like I'm glad I don't have to pick because you got a bigot and a, and a crook, pretty much, to choose from. So, anyway, that's all I'm going to say about the U.S. election. Um, second show that I've been loving uh, was Pitch, which is about a young woman who is the first female to ever play in the uh, Major League Baseball. And I hate baseball. I absolutely hate it with a passion. But I really am enjoying the show because it just shows the dynamics of what, would, what might happen if a woman just was ever put onto a major league team. Um, and the actors are great in it too. It has, what's his name? The guy who played, um, oh my god, he was in Saved by the Bell. I can't think of his name. I'll put it up. Um, he's in it and he plays the back catcher and he's super, super hot. I was watching the first episode I'm like, I recognize this guy. Who is he? Where do I recognize it from? And then when the name came up on the screen, I'm like, oh my god, it's the guy from Saved by the Bell. How the hell did I miss that? He He's aged pretty well. That's, that's all I have to say. Um, and final favorite, Walking Dead. Like, did you see that episode? <laughs> really? Um, let's have a little bit of a discussion. So, spoiler alert, if you have not seen the first episode of the new season, I'm going to put a time right here as to where you should skip to if you don't want to hear any of the spoilers that I'm about to talk about. So here's your chance. Skip now. Okay. Okay, so if you're sticking with me, let's have a little bit of a Walking Dead discussion. Um, so great episode for starters. It, I love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I absolutely love him. But I wanted to grab that baseball bat off of him and slap him over the head with it myself because I can't believe what happened to Glenn and Abraham. They were my predictions. Like literally three or four hours before the premiere, I put on my Facebook page, okay, Walking Dead fans, who, who's going to get hit tonight? Who's going to die? And like my predictions are Abe and Glenn. I don't know if any of you guys have read the comics, but in the comics... This is how, that's how Glenn dies. Like, he is hit over the head by Lucille. He, he's the one who's killed. That is his death, his actual death in the comics. Literally frame for frame, too. Like, if you, I'm going to see if I can find a copy of the, like, a picture of that page from the comic and put it up here if I can. So you can see, like, like, the bulging eye, all that kind of stuff was in the comic. And it was literally frame for frame. It was amazing. Um. The, the um, special effects with Greg Nicotero, he does an amazing job, like, it it was convincing, that's for sure. Um, the way it happened, though, where he just sort of turned around and whacked him over the head, I'm like, oh my god, it, couldn't, it just took me by complete surprise. But, um, the way that, you know, he broke, broke Rick into saying that he's the boss now and you know Rick's Rick's no longer top dog and you know it it just there's a whole new dynamic now to what's what's gonna happen like this whole situation is gonna at some point it's gonna boil over for sure and now we're gonna we've got to stick along for the ride to find out what's gonna happen next which makes me super excited for this entire season are any of you guys on the same page with me are you walking dead fans let me know down below. I love Walking Dead. It's like, it is my favorite show uh, right now. 
for sure. I love Walking Dead so much. Uh, I just get, I'm so emotionally attached attached to the characters um, that I knew Glad was going to die. <laughs> but I, I really didn't want it to happen because he is one of my favorite characters. Him and Daryl and Carol are probably my favorite characters from the show. I love those those characters for sure. So let's hope nothing happens to Daryl and Carol and they finally hook up because that would be great. If you're watching Walking Dead writers, let's let's get Daryl and Carol together, please. Finally. Like they need, she needs to get back to Alexandria. Actually they both need to get back to Alexandria after what happened to Daryl in the ep uh, last episode. Let's get them together, please. You know, you got Michonne and Rick together now. Let's get uh, Daryl and Carol together, please. That would be great. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about Walking Dead and we'll move on to a different subject. Um, let's see. Favorite movie uh, was Girl on the Train. Uh, last month I read, mentioned that I had read it and I loved the book and I was going to go see the movie. I finally did go see it and absolutely loved it. It was amazing. It was so good. It was very, very close to the book. I'm kind of pissed that it was set in New York City though when it should have been set in the UK. I hate when they do that, when they pick a book and then they completely change the location. Like if it's set in England, like leave it in England. Like that was one of the things that I hated when they did uh, Confessions of a Shopaho Shopaholic. They had it based in the States. Like yes, in the second book she, she goes to the States, but in the first book it's all in the UK. Like why you gotta mess with stuff like that? It drives me crazy. Like Becky Bloom wants English, not American. You gotta ruin these characters for me. Anyway, so yes, Girl on the Train was very well well done. The acting on it was really, really good. Um, I knew it was going to happen because obviously I'd read the book. Tw all the twists and turns are there that were in the book. It was it was really, really well done. Uh, the acting, again, was great. Uh, Emily Blunt was really, really, really convincing as an alcoholic, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen Girl on the Train, go see it. I really recommend it. My favorite YouTube video of the month was um, Jimmy Fallon and Chris Hart when they did the uh, walkthrough of a haunted house. Oh my god. It was so funny, just their reactions. I don't think I could ever go into one of those haunted houses. I'd probably, I'd probably poop myself. Uh, but their reactions were, were just hilarious. Especially because they had the body cams on. Oh, it was, it was so funny. I'm going to leave a link to that down below for you if you want to go check it out. And uh, lastly, I guess we'll talk about favorite song. Uh, my favorite song this past month uh, came out very recently, towards the end of the month, and I've never really listened to Little Mix before, but I heard their song come on, um, and it's just really, really catchy lyrics. It's a great breakup song, that's for sure. It's called Shout Out to My Ex. Now, I don't have my, like, my ex, like, I've been married for... 11 years. I've been with my husband for like 14 years, so it's been a long time since I've had an ex, but and he, you know, we didn't really have that, uh, you know, a nasty breakup. So I can imagine this would be a great breakup song for somebody who was trying to get over their ex-boyfriend. It, it's really, me and my daughter like to dance around to it when we're trying to get ready in the mornings. So I'm going to leave a link to the music video down below. Uh, go check it out. It's a really good song. That's it guys, that's the end of my October favorites. I really can't believe we're, we're going into November. Which means I have to deal with snow and the cold. Which I really don't want to deal with, a with either. I gotta get my husband to put my snow tires on. That sucks. <laughs> but I'm coming to Florida in February, thank God. Alright, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you again so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. So my nurse, my nurse, my nurse, and you guys know how much I love my holographic nail polishes. So uh, basically, anytime I see the word holographic, I'm like, buy all the things. <laughs> I have way too much nail polish. Designated survivor with Kiefer Sutherland, it has Kiefer Sutherland, 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 Sutherland in it. that.